As everyone knows, we have two kidneys, each functioning independently. Diuretic action occurs in the kidney. This is where the body controls filtration, reabsorption, and excretion of water, small molecules, and ions, such as sodium and potassium. The outer layer of the kidney is called the cortex. The inner layer is the medulla. This is where we have millions of special structures called nephrons. We will now zoom in to a single nephron. The nephron is a tubular structure similar to a porous pipe or hose. The glomerulus serves as a starting point for the flow through the nephron. First, the blood enters the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole. The blood exits the glomerulus through the efferent arteriole. The glomerulus is where the blood supply is filtered by osmosis and diffusion. As blood passes through the porous capillary loops, water and molecules smaller than about 50,000 molecular weight are filtered, passing into the Bauman space. This creates the luminal fluid flowing through the nephron tubule. About one-fifth of the total blood volume is continually filtered into the Bauman's capsule. About 99% of this volume is reabsorbed, leaving only a small volume to be excreted as urine. Each section of the nephron has a different morphology of cells making up the single cell wall which causes differences in water permeability and ion transport. The first section of the nephron is called the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule is highly permeable, and about 65% of the filtered sodium and water leak out to be reabsorbed into the nearby capillaries. Old diuretics called carbonic anhydrase inhibitors mostly act on this portion of the nephron. The proximal convoluted tubule leads into the loop of Henle, which has a thin descending limb and a thin and thick ascending limb. The thick ascending limb normally reabsorbs about 25% of the filtered sodium, but does not allow water to reabsorb. The loop diuretics act here by blocking sodium potassium chloride ion cotransporters on the luminal membrane. The next section is called the distal convoluted tubule. This section does not allow water to reabsorb, but reabsorbs sodium through the sodium chloride ion cotransporters. The thiazide diuretics act here on this transporter. The last section of the nephron is called the collecting tubule. Sodium channel blockers and aldosterone antagonist diuretics act here. At each site along the nephron tubule, certain molecules are able to permeate the wall and leak out into the interstitium. These molecules will be reabsorbed into the paratubular capillary and be returned to the systemic blood supply. Now, we will zoom inside the tubule and then show the molecular details of reabsorption. This is a single layer of cells making up the tubule wall. Ions and water molecules flow through the tubule. This image shows the single cell layer making up the wall of the ascending limb of the nephron. This sodium reabsorption is driven by the sodium-potassium ATPase transporter on the antiluminal membrane. For every three sodium ions moving out of the cell to the interstitium, two potassium ions move from the interstitium to the inside of the cell. This causes a deficit of the sodium within the cell. This deficit is made up by the sodium-potassium chloride transporter on the luminal membrane of the cell. This transporter moves one sodium, one potassium, and two chloride ions from the lumen into the wall of the nephron. The potassium and chloride ions move down their concentration gradients through their respective channels. The potassium returns to the lumen through a potassium channel. The chloride is removed to the interstitium through a chloride channel. 
The net result is the continuing transport of three sodium ions and six chloride ions from the luminal fluid into the interstitium. This sodium is reabsorbed into the circulation. Because of the secretion of potassium, a positive voltage is generated in the lumen, resulting in reabsorption of positively charged ions through the paracellular junction. When the sodium-potassium chloride transporter is blocked by the loop diuretics, the sodium-potassium exchange begins. But the sodium deficit cannot be replaced by the sodium from the lumen. This blocks the overall reabsorption of sodium from this site in the nephron. The net result is greater excretion of sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, and magnesium in the presence of the loop diuretics. The next site for diuretic action is the distal convoluted tubule. This is where the physi diuretics act. The transporters present in the distal convoluted tubule are slightly different than those described in the ascending limb. In the distal convoluted tubule, the sodium chloride co-transporter replaces the sodium deficit caused by the sodium potassium ATPase. The chloride is reabsorbed through chloride channels and the potassium returns to the interstitium through a potassium channel. This sequence results in overall sodium and chloride reabsorption. However, the thiazide diuretics bind at the chloride binding site and block the sodium chloride co-transporter. This blocks sodium and chloride reabsorption, resulting in net excretion of sodium and chloride. The last site for diuretic action is the connecting and collecting tubules. This is where the sodium channel inhibitors act. Again, the transporters present in the collecting tubule are slightly different than at the other sites of the nephron. At this site, the same sodium-potassium exchange occurs on the antiluminal membrane. However, the sodium is replaced at this site through the sodium channels on the luminal membrane, and potassium excretion is completed by transport through potassium channels on the luminal membrane. This continuing exchange results in overall sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion. When the sodium channel inhibitors are present, they block the sodium channel. This prevents the continual reabsorption of sodium and also prevents the overall excretion of potassium. This is why sodium channel inhibitors are called potassium sparing. Thus, all of the diuretic agents described directly decrease the reabsorption of sodium by blocking specific ion transporters in the various segments of the nephron tubule. This indirectly affects reabsorption and excretion of water and other ions as described for each type of diuretic.